Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we are specifically going to talk about um, the about save. This is going to be player specific, and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try. You know, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons more, and I, I'm actually going to play Dungeons and Dragons right now, and um, I really want to try to focus on giving good advice for players. It's incredibly difficult to do. Um, because there's so few actually engaged players who aren't dungeon masters. And I, I wish we had the Uber players, but we, we just don't. They haven't arrived. Um, let me stay focused. So uh, so this is just player-specific advice today. And what I want to talk about is who we save and what is how we save people and what we save them from and how this can be broader than we expected. And basically, specifically... Um, how the defini uh, definition of this is changed by um, the new... Who are the new drivers in Dungeons & Dragons lessons? In Dungeons & Dragons um, mor morality? In Dungeons & Dragons IRL alignment um, learning, right? And th that is Daly and Goldstein. Daly and Goldstein wrote Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. They have been elevated to a new position. Um, you know, I really, you know, we're looking for the second Gary, right? Um, or, and I think, you know, I've been looking for the second Gary, but I think the, what we're really, where we're arriving is mega gigs, G-Y-G, -G, right? People who are serving the same purpose that Gary uh, served when he was alive and pulling the same rope that Gary is pulling in his death. Gary Gygax does a ton of work from his grave every single day with his legacy. And honestly, he is a model. He is an absolute stunning model of what to do with your life. Excuse me. And he lived such a powerful life that he's still speaking in his death. His legacy is set, right? And if you can live an incredible life and accomplish and do so much, you know, that it that it just echoes um, from, you know, 15 different facets of the diamond that you were. And, and you know, and I really feel that Gary is the fourth, he's the fourth person like this in American history, right? George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Harriet Tubman, and Gary Gygax. Absolutely, you know, shocking American heroes, right? And so where we, where we're arriving is we have these mega gigs, Right. And I really think Daly and Goldstein are mega gigs. And what we're going to learn today about how how to properly save someone, how to hero, how to be a savior, right, um, is pretty profound, right? And it's coming directly from Daly and Goldstein from their work, not in Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, but their shocking, incredible work, bringing the same quality, the same energy the same effect, right? The same lesson teaching that we saw in Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, and now we see the same in um, in the Flash, right? So Daly and Goldstein are the heart of the Flash. They wrote this, and you can see this movie succeeds in in my opinion, ninety nine percent of the six, six, of the qualitative success. Of the story of the Flash, right? Because I understand the Flash is actually a, a blockbuster failure. Um, is Daly and Goldstein, and and I know this is complex, right? Like Daly and Goldstein are now responsible for two huge box office failures that are actually shockingly good movies with with some of the best writing happening in done in, in Hollywood right now. So very complex, but let's get into this. Okay, so saving people, being a savior. Right, and I know that that's a that's a weighty word, right? Savior. Wait a second, Scott. Am I a savior? Yes. If you save people, right? Like folk hero is literally a background in Dungeons and Dragons. You are a hero, and you are saving people, right? This is real, right? You are saving people. You are functioning as a savior. Now, let's not get twi no, let's not get it twisted. You are not the savior, right? Jesus Christ came to save the entire earth and did it, right? He got up on a cross and said, I will accept death for every person's sin on this planet. And right now, you, if you haven't asked God to give you salvation, are on the way to the hot place forever. 
That is not good. All you got to do is say, Lord, I heard you died on the cross for me and are willing to take the wrath of God for every sin I've ever committed. I believe you did that. I want to be saved. I do not want to go to the hot place. Please save me. That's it. You saved as long as you believe it, right? Like, so, but in Dungeons and Dragons, we are a savior. We can save, we can't save all of humankind, right? That's what Jesus did. We can save uh, a village. We can save a city. We can save a world. We can save an astral space, right? Like, you know, like we can save literally multiple realms, right? We, as planeswalkers, we can we can save all of the material plane of Dungeons and Dragons, and then by canon in Dungeons and Dragons, we can go right over onto Dominaria and save Dominaria, Kaladesh, Innistrad, and a whole bunch of Magic the Gathering realms, right? So we can we can save realms in two different types of universes, right? Because it's a multiverse, right? So it, it's it's incredible. All right, so, so let's talk about what um, Daily and Goldstein, man, they really, it is absolutely astounding what they did. So in um, in The Flash, there's this scene, by the way, spoilers for The Flash, sorry. Um, so in The Flash, there's this incredible scene where Barry Allen, uh, Barry Allen and Barry Allen, played by Ezra Miller and Ezra Miller, and now we know why Ezra, in my humble opinion, the reason Ezra Miller used the term, like, Ezra Miller is the most, the most historically important actor of this millennium, of this millennium, without exception, right? And the reason why is he has actually. So, I used to believe that the they pronouns were confusing. They're not confusing. They're completely accurate, right? I think that Ezra Miller established that the they pronouns is absolutely correct. It is simply identifying a manifold sentient outside of Dungeons and Dragons, someone who is multiple people. And I really think that Ezra Miller was using the they pronouns, knowing he was headed toward a role like this, where he would play multiple people and was multiple people before he reached the point where he was representing multiple people on screen. So I, I actually think Ezra Miller and Ezra Miller prepared to play Barry Allen and Barry Allen. It's why his performance is... In, it's, well, actually, it's peerless by anyone except Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger is the only person to pay the iron price and do more to actually bring a, a comic character to life than Ezra Miller did. Okay? All right. So, Barry Allen is um, is is in, I think it's Metropolis, right? He's in Metropolis. And there's a huge, um, there's a huge debris field that is sweeping through the city. You know how, like in every disaster movie, like a wave sweeps through a city. Well, this is a debris field that's sweeping through a city, right? And Zod is sending destruction into the city of Metropolis, right? And so, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is Gotham. This is Gotham. So he's sending this debris field through Gotham, and people are dying, right? So Barry Allen, using the speed force, you know, starts saving people left and right, right? But it, Barry Allen has just gotten his um, his speed powers, and he really doesn't know how to use them very well. And so what ends up happening is he's uh, he goes and there's his father and his son and they're about to be, both be killed by the debris force. He goes to grab them both, but he's only able to grab the son, right? And the father is left behind in the um, in the street. And so Barry Allen starts starts running backwards, right? Um, and he's watching this, you know, he's looking to see is there anybody else I can grab, you know, and, and save. And he realizes that the, the father is about to die, right? And so he's like, okay, I have this boy in my arms and I don't have time to go back and get the father, even with as you know, fast as I am, but I do have time to outrun the debris force, but we're looking at the debris, the debris, the, the, way, the debris wave, right? And he realizes I can save this boy. I can't save his father, but this boy in my arms is about to see his father killed, right? And this is the brilliance of Daly and Goldstein. And that and their brilliance was sparked against the rock of Dungeons and Dragons. And I believe that their time writing Dungeons and Dragons has made them the best Hollywood writers ever born. Ever born. Right? And you're not aware of it, but Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves and The Flash are by far two of our top ten movies written within the twenty twenties, in my in, in my opinion, right? So you have this situation 
where Daly and Goldstein then they what they do is they ha Barry Allen cannot save the father. He can save the son, but he doesn't just save the son's life. He puts his hand and Barry and Goldstein wrote this absolutely a tremendous. He puts his hand. And this is the kind of detail that you get when you are a world builder, when you are a dungeon master, when you understand dungeon mastering. And this is why it's so important to stay on this. He covers the boy's eyes. Barry Allen, played by Ezra, Barry Allen and Barry Allen, played by Ezra Miller and Ezra Miller, right? He covers the boy's eyes, right? And so he saves him, he literally saves his life, but he saves him the trauma of his father's death right? And this puts him into that savior role, right? Where I save at multiple levels. It's not enough to save you physically. I need to save you emotionally. And I even, and because we all know that our, you know, the, the our role of the father, actually, yeah, this is, this is just my humble opinion. And, and every other event, evangelical Christian pastor has ever talked about this. will say the same thing generally. Uh, your opinion of your father is highly linked to your opinion of God, God the Father. Not just not the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. They have different roles. But so he's he's saving him physically, but he's also saving him emotionally and spiritually, right? If he sees his father destroyed, is he able then to believe in a in God the Father, right? Is if he sees his father destroyed, can he emotionally recover, right? So Barry, if he if he physically saves him, but he doesn't cover his eyes, what's the point, right? If he spends the rest of his life shattered, right, broken, right, not able to function, not able to experience joy, not able to bring joy to others, what was the point, right? And so he he saves him physically, but also emotionally, right? And this is where we get to podium dungeon drag podium dungeons and dragons. This is where we get to podium Dungeons and Dragons. You're a player at a table. Yes, any schmuck dungeon master can let you cut a goblet in half, right? But Daly and Goldstein are taking their position as mega gigs, right? Of, I'm another Gary Gygax. Not the second, another Gary Gygax, right? And I'm going to call you to more. I'm going to call you to more, right? Gary said, hey, you wanna play Dungeons and Dragons? Sit down. Here's my question. Are you good, neutral, or evil? It's on the character sheet, but did you realize the question is to you? Did you realize 40 years from now, sad sack designers would pull this out because they don't have the courage to ask their own alignment, their own morality, right? Do you, you, know, do you understand that, you know, do you understand the importance of this question, right? And here, Daly and Goldstein are carrying Dungeons and Dragons morality to Hollywood and saying it's not enough, right? You're never going to see this in a Michael Bay movie. You will never see this in a Michael Bay film, right? There, if you save somebody from the dam being destroyed, it's enough, right? But because this is Dungeons and Dragons and there's a difference between cut a goblin in half Dungeons and Dragons and podium level play, right? Are you a player who, when you finish your evening and you say, am I one of the top, you know, Am I top th th 200 to 300? I get the bronze. Am I top 100 to 200? I get the silver. Am I top 0 to 100? In the world, do I get the gold? Podium level Dungeons & Dragons is physical saving is not enough. Emotional saving needs to be in the mix. And this is in the middle of Flash because Flash is built with Dungeons & Dragons. It's built with Dungeons & Dragons, Hollywood writers, Daly and Goldstein. And every single thing they touch from this point forward brings awesomeness, the spark from Crawford, from Jeremy Crawford, right? Christopher Perkins, Amanda Heyman. None of their scripts will ever, ever, ever stand without Dungeons & Dragons inputs. Do, do, you, do you understand that? Do you understand that Dungeons & Dragons is going to be an ingredient in half the movies you watch? You know, like, that are good within the next 10 years. It is truly astounding, right? Saving physically is not enough. As players, we need to realize we need to save people. Our player characters need to save them emotionally, spiritually, um, 
in addition to physically. That's podium level Dungeons and Dragons, in my humble opinion. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. Um, and but what's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion. When you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.